and, and, uh, uh, and then the mistakes you make, yeah. you take care of them in practice. Yeah. But tell them say, when you lie, yeah. you got to stay lying. Yeah. You got to learn how to recover in public. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. Come on, give God praise. How many of y'all ready for the word? Yeah. Amen, amen. When I ask like you ready for the word, we're going to say a word. Up. How many of y'all ready for the word? Yeah. And we thank God for my uncle, amen. Minister Lane's father. Amen. Raise your hands up loud. We thank God for him. Amen. We yeah, relocated to another state, but he could have went to a lot of churches in the city. Right. When he came to this one, we are thankful for him. Amen. 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 Now, one thing I don't know about people in church. All right. You've got to have thick skin. All right. Oh, yeah. Yes, you And you've got to get it to know the conclusion of the matter. Before you start pre-thinking things. Because just like you start pre-thinking, you probably didn't think it wrong. Amen. And you got to be seasoned enough to just sell it. Yeah. Just say, look, somebody said, just wait for a little bit. Just wait for a little bit. Everything is going to work out all right. Yeah. Tell them, say, it's meant to work out well. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is Father's Day. Y'all clap your hands for the Father's Day. Yeah. Enjoy the praise team and the power and the choir. Clap your hands for them. The first time out together, y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing. Amen. So you already know what it's going to be like. It's yeah. going to be horrible on the devil. That's right. Now I'll include everybody in today's message, but this is set aside for Father's Day, and Father's yeah. Day is very important. Uh -huh. And whether really, you want to believe it or not, Fathers are necessary. Amen. 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 God spoke to me one time in one of the most horrific trials of my spiritual walk with him. And he spoke to me. I woke up one morning and the Lord spoke to me. I was so discouraged. Uh, Mother uh, Dupree, and, and this is a true story. I was so discouraged. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you are necessary. Amen. He told me, he said, you are necessary. The way you talk, the way you're built, the way you act, your style is necessary. Because one of the most detrimental things that can happen to a man is to feel as if he's not validated. That's why women, the Bible tells you, where it suggests to you, that a wise woman That's right. builds her house. Yeah. But a foolish woman put it down with her hands. Yeah. And when you have a man in your life, a man, it is your job to make him feel, and I mean a husband, say man. Amen. But I understand that I ain't crazy either. All y'all ain't got good, but you got me. Yeah. Amen. But it's your job to build him yeah. with what you say. Yeah. And what you do, and not only that, and too much walking, not only that, amen, you'll be, I like that, amen, your like behavior, right. say amen, I like that. amen, but I, I found out I'll be more effective than you will out there, that's why I try to watch. All right, that's right, I like that. When I came up, your mother told you to use the bathroom, do a break, amen, but, but grown folk, you need to get your bladders on empty too, say amen. <laughs> You can't tell them don't need the sanctuary and you got a bag of skittles. <laughs> Talking about my breath bag, here you come, baby, get me a pepper bit. Get your breath together, go, you come, say man. Yeah. Man has to be validated. Yeah. Are you listening to me here? Yeah. And when a woman will build her husband up, watch this, with your behavior. See, because you understand, and, and then you got to keep your femininity too. You understand? Because you got me, y'all been together 10 years. Honey, you didn't have a bed. You didn't go to bed in a crumple sack when you first got with him. Say amen. And now you get all these hairdos that you got to hang your head over the bed. Amen. Because you care more about your hairdos, say amen, than your husband. Look, somebody said the devil is alive. Amen. Because your hairdo, you supposed to look good for him. I think you know. But he must be validated. Say amen. I don't care. I don't care if you're this small or that's right. That big. Yeah. You be appealing to him. That's right. And he'll feel like he's worth something. Yeah. He's already got things against him. There are things that have come, amen, that have already uh, demasculated. 
emasculated him, or emasculated him. Years ago, a few years ago, I preached the message, and the subject was the masculinity of Christ. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. The masculinity of Christ. Yeah. Because we see these portraits, and even the ones that are black, and they, they have our Lord and Savior with the long flowing hair. He's almost pretty, but Jesus wasn't no joke. Jesus was a real man. Anybody that could walk from one town to the next with sandals, y'all ain't talking to me. And then he went into a temple and he fought ghetto style. And, and then he didn't say put up the deuce. He took a two by four and got it right. He was a man. And most real men will not follow weak leadership. That's why you can look at our sons and, and praise God. And, and they can go in the military. They can go, amen, to, the, to their schools and get on these various teams. And the coach can holler at them and, and come on, toughen up, toughen up. And we're losing that now. Amen. And they can, they, they, it don't tear them down. It makes them uh, feel like, I can't. I can't get no help around here. And now, they, the male and their figure has to be pro, I can. Yeah. I don't ever man in here to say, I can. I can. You got to assert ourselves. Amen. And, and, and I want to share, amen. God spoke to me um, in his kind and I promise you, uh, you, you can know me. And I do church on. Uh, I'm not going undress, but I'm going to get ready to preach. The suit was for the, the, the protocol, but I'm working now. I say amen. But God spoke to me, praise God, uh, from a scripture that seems uh, unconventional, but I saw something in here concerning me. Go, amen, with me, if you will, to 2 Kings, chapter number 6. I want to share something out of the word of the Lord with you from 2 Kings. And we're not going to be here all day, but we're going to do something against the forces of darkness while we're here. Is that right? right. And isn't that the purpose of the preaching of the gospel? That's right. To get folk who are out of line with God back in right relationship with God. Amen. 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 And the way we do that is by the inspiration of the word or with knowledge. Yes. My people perish for the lack of what? Amen, amen, amen. Now, what happens is people refute knowledge. I'll sit down and listen even if what you're telling me I already know. I'll still listen, though. Have you ever watched a movie that you like and you watch it more than one time and you realize the second or third time you watched it that you saw something that you didn't see the first time you watched it? Well, that's the same way it is with wisdom and advice. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's a principle that wisdom is ever evolving. Evolving. People are the ones who stop growing. Do you have Second Kings chapter number six? If you have it, shall I have it? The sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, verse number one, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. It's too narrow, too small. Let us go, we pray thee, unto the Jordan and take thee, take this, every man, a beam, yes. and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, be, cont be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. Verse 4. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down, they cut down wood. But as one was failing, a beam, the axe head, yeah. fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. Yeah. And the man of God said, Where fell he? And he showed him in the place. And he cut down a stick uh -huh. and cast it in thither. And the iron did swell. Yes. Watch this. Yes. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. Uh -huh. And watch this. He put out his hand and he took it. Yeah. And all the time when we talk about this, we talk about the miracle of the floating axe head. Right. But God gave me something else. Look at somebody and repeat it for me. Say, say, neighbor, neighbor. it's back, it's back. In, his hand. in his hand. 
When somebody says back in your hand, tell somebody says back in your hand. Uh, you go with me. Amen. Men, amen, have become disconnected from his rightful place. We are spiraling downhill from the dignity of what God intended for us to be. And as a result, everything is out of place. You have to understand that God is a God of order. You can say what you want, but God is a God of order. And the Bible said in the beginning, when God, amen, created the heaven and the earth, he had a system when you read chapter number one of Genesis to chapter number three, there was a system by which God did. The seventh day he rested, the sixth day he created man, put him in a deep sleep and he created man. He fashioned in his own image and likeness, amen, created he them. Somebody say them. Yeah. Watch this. All right. All right. So now, so now, when, when, when man is not in place, everything is out of order. Y'all yeah. don't like that. But tell somebody, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. As a result, everything is out of place. And we have even lost touch with what's right and what's wrong. Real men, what we represent, and the real men that are represented, we are almost on the list of extinction. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I don't say folk that were males. Uh -huh. I say, but real men, real men are almost extinct now. Yeah. We are, we are a, a dying breed. Come on, somebody. We are, we are rare. Real men are rare to find now. Come on, somebody. We're on the list of extinction. And, 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 and the view that the young people have about men is not even a shadow of the image that God is calling for us to be. We've allowed ourselves to become a man, a, 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 a shadow of what God has caused us. And for many, in, in many cases, nothing, amen, more than shells of what God wants us to look like. Amen. And so now our sons and daughters have a low expectation of manhood. Manhood used to be attractive. Manhood represented strength. I can't get no help around right here. But somewhere between the government and somewhere between the fathers of old and somewhere, amen, we lost the masculinity of manhood. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But tell somebody to say, but it's back in your head now. Amen. The expectation of manhood for when you have two men. And I'm not going to stay on this, but i got to talk about it. And two women trying to raise children, you mess up the process of natural growth. That's why when you see men in church, whether they're saying or not, you ought to stop praising God. I can't give nobody, because it's men in here. And some of y'all ain't praising God. Whenever you see a man in church, a boy in church, a teenage boy in church, whether you say or not, you ought to get happy and stop praising God. I can't give nobody around here. And some of y'all, you understand, that's one thing they won't like about me back. Rochester, because I'm going to preach all the same. You, 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 I see now in the school system where I work, where boys used to be called mannish. Yeah. When they had seen, picked in there, seen mom and dad, you know, getting jiggy with. <laughs> they were mannish. Yeah. And they went to school. They tried to touch on a little girl, but there's a problem now because now they still trying to touch, but they ain't after the little girl. They trying to touch on one another. I can't get no help around here. All right now. Don't look at me funny. Tell you niggas it's gonna be all right. So just hold on. Hold on. He ain't just talking about homosexuality and lesbianism today. He talking about manhood. Can I get any help around here? Yeah. Proverbs 20, verse 5. Let's go there right here. Well, sir. 
I want to show you something about what the Bible says. Twenty verse five. You can't mess with me if I'm in the Bible, can you? No. Amen. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find question mark. The just man walking in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Did you get that? When a man leads out the right way, he's in integrity. His children will follow him. I know they say nothing. That's why the Bible said, train them up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from him. It don't mean that they're across every God. I only cross every team, God every eye. Child, I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put a white child in the 